Hey, hey, Tony Gaskins here, popping on in. I want to talk to you about something that I see happening that's not really being understood and it's not really being taken seriously. And it's so funny to me because, and, and I'm trying to, I'm going to sit down and relate this to myself later and just talk to God and just, and really just ask God like, hey, where do I have this type of power and influence and dominion in and over my life that I'm not tapping into, that I'm not taking seriously? Where is it? Lord, where is my blind spot that I'm missing where I have a lot more say-so than I understand? Because that's one of the things that I'm seeing happen with women today not only in America, but across the world. But one of the things that is happening is right now, the first thing I want women to understand is right now, it's the woman's turn in every sense of the word. If you pay attention to society, you will see that women are excelling in ways like never before. Women are growing and climbing in ways like never before. Women are leading in a lot of different areas like never before. Even in areas like entrepreneurship, like the largest group of new entrepreneurs is women. And inside of that, it's black women. And even in college degrees, women are leading in the amount of degrees that are being achieved. So therefore, women will be leading in job acquisition, getting hired more than men. And women are now, because you got to remember, we come from where women couldn't vote. Women had no say-so over their body and different type of things that was just very disproportionate. But now we have women who are, and I mean, it's always been, but more than ever, now women becoming billionaires. Like we're seeing individuals like Rihanna, who comes from small island of Barbados, become a billionaire. And Kylie Jenner and Kim Kardashian, you know, two you got two billionaires in the same family, two billionaire women from the same family, same mom. I think they have different dads, them two. But think about that. We we watching women make millions of dollars from starting a company that was started in their kitchen or in their garage, in their bedroom and make millions of dollars from selling this product. So you got to understand that the, the first will be last and the last will be first. And so there's a shift in that area. Uh, think about all of the women who are married and earn more than their husband today. That was never the case some years back. So now you got women that are earning more than their male spouses and colleagues and counterparts. So, but, but at the same time, with that comes a lot of other things because God is not going to open up and pour out and bless. And then the adversary just sit back and watch all this movement happen and not want to get in on the action. So what's also happening and what you will notice and what I'm noticing is the perversion of women. So men have been in this place to earn more money. But what you've always seen attached to men was this promiscuity and this perversion where men would be acting out in a lot of different ways and indulging in a lot of vices. Well, when you think about it, now when you look around, there are more women smoking weed than ever before. There are more women having one night stands than ever before. There are more women selling their body. 
like this whole thing is a real thing now, which there's nothing new under the sun, but you got to understand that things intensify and, and grow at rapid rates. There is a whole network of sugar daddies now, of women with sugar daddies, to where there are women who their job and they on TikTok and they on Instagram and they showing this lifestyle, but you don't really see how they can make millions of dollars to afford this lifestyle because they don't have a company that's producing millions. And so what's happening is there are women who are professional sugar babies and they go from rich man to rich man. And he use her in every kind of way he want to use her, flip her, toss her. But he's so rich, out of that six-month relationship, she get a G-Wagon, bought cash in her name. She get a Range Rover she get a, or she get a Rolls Royce. Some of these women, they're getting Birkin on top of Birkin. Now, some of these women are getting finesse because there is also a, a market and a system out there where people they have different type of products that don't cost what the retail is. You know, it's different resales and different things of that nature that's out there that people get because they're like, man, I ain't finna spend all this money and you can't tell the difference. You know, you can't tell the difference. So it's still some women get finesse too and they think they got them this and that and it ain't really the the real thing. And it's celebrity women getting hit like that as well because the men then tapped into that market where they could get those type of things. But my point is, is it's going both ways. So while women are now flourishing more than ever, women are also being attacked more than ever by the adversary. And if you pay attention and you look around, what you're going to see is you will see these movements of promiscuity amongst women and women saying, you know, men could do it, we could do it too. And so in that type of mindset that men could do it, we could do it too, it it doesn't benefit us, it doesn't help us because a woman is the the backbone, meaning she she's the the more stable person in the household. So if a woman is going to have children, she has to have a different type. She has naturally a different type of stability than the man. And then also a lot of men are deadbeat dads and they take off on that woman. So if the woman is not stable, then she's left as a single mom. But imagine being an unstable single mom. Now it's even worse in what she's going through and what she's dealing with. And so... You know, God created us in a way where we have what we need to do what what we need to do, what's expected of us. And this is something that we don't oftentimes think about, but and I don't think there may be a correlation. There may be a correlation because when you think about it, you assume that a man's testosterone running through his bloodstream is what pushes him to earn more money. You assume that that testosterone is, and it's what women call when they start to earn more and they become a boss and they are really pushing the limits in the corporate space or the entrepreneurial space, you will hear a lot of women say, I'm tired of operating in my masculine. So there's a mental association with hustling to make money being a masculine trait and not a feminine trait. So therefore, when a woman is in her masculine, she may also start to adopt other traits of what is seen to be masculinity. But we don't really oftentimes understand masculinity or femininity and we very easily confuse them and we associate or give attributes to these energies that we don't really understand. And so we'll define feminine in a certain way with a certain look, a certain smell, a certain this and that. And the same thing with masculinity. And sometimes these things are more so rooted in gender roles 
but we'll call it masculine and feminine, not understanding that what we're attributing to this masculine or feminine energy is from programming of gender roles and not understanding how in certain cultures and in certain regions of the world, what we think is masculine is actually the complete opposite and what we think is feminine is actually the complete opposite, but it was what is called for in that culture or in that region. And we don't oftentimes think about that. So there is a lot of personal say so and a lot of individual agency in these areas. And it's not oftentimes being thought about. So what you have to realize is now as women, if you notice, as women began to climb the corporate ladder and women began to earn more money, you will notice that also what increased is women's rate of promiscuity and women's adventurous side. So it became normalized in Atlanta and Houston for women to frequent the strip club. And women are going to the strip club with their girlfriends. And women going to the strip club with their boyfriend or their sugar daddy or their their husband. And that was something that was never done years before like on like as a normal average thing yeah i'm pretty sure from the existence you had women that'll go in there for the entertainment but it probably but it was it was taboo and it was something that was not really seen but and it was like the strip club is for for men you got the women who are working and then you got the men but now you can see a whole vip section that's full of women and they throwing, they throwing ones. And at the same time, a lot of these women are also doing fraud, you know, running scams, real estate fraud, credit card fraud, government, you know, PPP, you know, government loan type fraud. And then also a lot of these women are, are running successful businesses, whether it's credit repair or whatever it may be type of successful business. And I see a lot of successful women in the strip club or going to the strip club, you know, with their man. And so what what the goal is of the adversary, and this has to be understood, is we have royal priesthood from God. What I mean by that is we have a, a calling and a place from God given to us by God. It's like a, a birthright from God where we are called to hire. What the adversary wants to do is to disrupt that calling and to pervert that calling. So what you will see is individuals being tempted and being lured into different lifestyles and different things that pull them or separate them from God, so to speak. So when you look at the story of Adam and Eve and you see how they were given this, what I'm calling royal priesthood, like they were given this elite position on the planet. They were put in a place of, in a position of dominion. And, but with that dominion, they had to be subject to God in submission to God and obedient to the will of God. And so God says, listen, you can have all of this, just don't do this and don't do this. And then here comes the adversary and says, no, that's not true. You can do it. So what the story is showing how the adversary comes to make the forbidden seem forgivable, make it seem okay. So as you notice, a strip club and threesomes and doing drugs were taboo. They were taboo. They were forbidden. Things that you should not do, should not engage in. It, it It's an underworld. It's a subculture. It's low life humans that do these things is what it was initially coined and phrased and positioned as. And so there was this separation between good and evil. 
as you notice, as time goes by, now the line is starting to be blurred so that this separation between good and evil that was so was, was such a wide gap, that gap is being closed. And that is why you see some of the churches. Now you see the churches doing the unthinkable. Think about it. When you go back, you know, if even a couple of decades, when would you see, you know, when, when you were, when you were 20 years old, you know, if you 40, when you think about when you were 20, when would you see a pastor dressing like the pastors today dress and doing their hair the way the pastors today do their hair? And wearing the the gaudy jewelry that the pastors today are wearing. Because God has not changed. It, it, God is the same God. Like God ain't, God don't get hip. God don't get cool. You know, the Holy Spirit does not hippify and coolify and change with the trends. The, the Holy Spirit the same. The Spirit of God is the same. Jesus Christ the same. So the fact that the pastors are changing, that change is for the world because God don't require change in that area because God is God. God, God don't have to change and become more worldly to reach anybody. Like Jesus didn't dumb himself down. Jesus didn't muddy the waters or he didn't look like the world and act like the world and talk like the world to reach the Gentiles. He didn't act like a Gentile to reach the Gentiles. He remained holy and righteous and set apart. And he said, if you want to be a part of this body, you have to make the choice to see the deity, the righteousness of my father and you welcome, you welcome to come drink from this cup. You welcome to come be a part of this family, this brotherhood. But I'm not going to sin or to look like sin or to emulate sin or to play in sin to win. I'm not going to defile my spirit or my body to win the Gentiles over. That was Jesus' whole stance. But see, if you notice how secular the world is becoming, and there's a large, large movement, and it's against women. And the reason why this, this shift is to the woman now is because it has been on the man for so long. And it's been on the man for so long because the man by God is deemed the head. But if you notice now, men are becoming more followers and less leaders. Men are not, a lot of men are not exemplifying leadership traits and leadership qualities. And men are, a lot of men are more or closer to a grown boy than they are to a grown man. So, the woman now is starting to become the leader. The woman now is starting to call the shots in the household and make the decisions in the household and to lead and to dictate how things run in the household. For one, the large part is the woman is a single mom. And then in a marriage, the woman is the one who organizes the family schedule and the kids and the food and all of these things. And so the woman is seen as the person who is the shot caller. And what the devil wants is he wants the head. So when you got millions of single moms, he's going to start to attack women. You got millions of women running their household in their marriage, he's gonna start to attack the women. And what you would notice is, is with the leadership that men had, 
there also was a lot of temptation because the goal is to get the leader to bite the apple. The goal is to get the leader to go against the will of God. And so there were so many men that went against the will of God and was turned over to basically a Sodom and Gomorrah mind state. And these men relinquished their royal priesthood. They relinquished their positioning in, on earth and their positioning under God. They relinquished that and was turned over to the wiles of the world, the temptations of Satan. So therefore, when the men are under the influence of the adversary's power and are now drunk in porn and drunk in lust and drunk in greed, now the attack shifts to get the woman to bite the apple to do the same thing to relinquish her position on earth and to relinquish her position under God. The adversary wants the woman to forsake her righteous mind the same way men have forsaken their righteous mind. And by forsaking a woman, forsaking her righteous mind, what that means is what was clear cut to a woman becomes blurred. Meaning, picture yourself being a woman, okay? Unless you're driving, you can't close your eyes. Picture yourself being a woman and picture there being a time before strip clubs and you're a woman. And at this time, you wearing dress that come to your ankles. You wearing jeans or what have you. And now here comes this creation, this institution where women go and get naked for strange men. Strange men, strange being the root word of stranger. Getting naked for strangers and using their body to nakedly entertain these strangers. Think about it. And think about the barbarianism of men and the mindset of a man at this time when this was created to sit and watch a woman that he has not taken on a date. He has not paid a bill for her. He has not slept with her. He has not had a child with her. He does not know her name, but he gets to see her undressed for him. See, really, see, really think about it. See, we don't really think about what the devil has. The devil has given us poison medicine. So it seems like medicine, meaning it seems like a stress reliever. It seems like a cool down. It seems like a, a wind down. It seems like a recreational transaction, but it's actually poison. But we have dubbed it and deemed it as recreation. So now we don't actually process how vile and how foul and how disgusting a strip club is. Like we don't process how the spirit of God, see, remember God is not a white man with a four foot long beard sitting in a gold chair on a throne in the sky. God is a spirit, a righteous, holy, pure spirit clean spirit. So we don't process how the spirit processes, how God processes the strip club, fornication, adultery, pornography, one night stands, threesomes, foursomes, swingers, open relationships, 
polyamorous relationships. We don't actually process how God processes these things. Now, and, and the next thing I want you to think about is think about the human body. Think about the human body. And think about the complexities of the human body that you are not thinking about. Do you, if you have a child, even if you don't have a child, if you've been a child, think about the process. From egg, sperm, embryo, fetus, whatever all this is, baby growing in another human, growing in a human, being helped and or harmed by the human who is carrying it. Then this human pushes this baby out, push a whole baby out of something that actually can experience pain from something that is far smaller. But in this process, this thing, which actually can be hurt and feel pain from something far smaller, which is the man's member, this thing now has the elasticity to push out something that is four times as wide as this thing that of the thing that could before cause pain. And yes, it is extremely painful. So I've been told, don't know, don't want to know, don't ever want to feel it. But I've been told that it is extremely painful and that it is as close as a woman comes to dying without dying. But some women actually die. I have two cousins who died. <clears throat> two cousins who died, two second cousins who died after giving birth. So think about this now. We don't think about the human process. So now here you have, when you process God's creation of a human, now you understand why it is said the body is a temple. And, and now here's the thing. A temple as we think of it is a physical structure, is a building that's built by man. And we worship that temple. We reverence that temple. But this is built by man. And man is built by God. So that is why the parishioners were so offended when Jesus said, if you destroy this temple, I will rebuild it in three days. And they were like, what? This thing took X amount of years. What you talk about, man? You finna, Hey, we finna handle you. What you talk about? But Jesus was saying, you have a temple that's greater than this structure right here. But see, what you don't understand is this structure that you reverencing don't mean anything compared to the temple that your spirit and that the Holy Spirit will reside in. So while you worshiping this building, but defiling your own temple, you're not understanding the hierarchy because your temple is greater than that building. So you going into this building and you putting on an act. You going into this building and you are acting. You pretending to be pure while you're sitting in this building that was built by man. But then when you leave the building, that means nothing to God in comparison to the temple that his Holy Spirit is supposed to inhabit. So you are acting in the building, but then real in your temple, which is God's building. God built you. And the Holy Spirit is to reside within you, meaning your thoughts, your words, and your actions should all be directed 
and influenced by the Holy Spirit. But when your temple is defiled, the Holy Spirit is not welcome. The Holy Spirit cannot reside inside of a temple that is defiled. The same way we treat the physical temple, the building, what don't we want to do? We don't want to defile this temple because it represents the physical house of God. But we forget that we also are a physical house of God. So Jesus still took the temple. The temple meant something. He still reverenced the temple because it is the house of God. So that's why Jesus went in there and flipped over the tables of the merchants because they had defiled the temple. And then that's when he had to help other people understand that, hey, there's another temple. You're trying to destroy this temple. I resurrect this temple. This temple will be resurrected in three days. And they're like, what? So think about this. What happens to the temple? When the Holy Spirit resides in a woman and then she takes her temple and she lies beneath a man who is not her husband. The two create a third spirit that will become another physical temple. So now her temple has been defiled by a man who is defiling his temple because they are not married. And then the two procreate a third temple, which is their child. But here is another temple that will be born a sinner. And then upon the age of understanding will be presented with the opportunity of salvation to receive Jesus Christ as his or her Lord and Savior. But what about when the man and or the woman decide to destroy the third temple through an act we call abortion? So they willingly procreated, but then decide to become a god to that third temple and destroy it. Now, this was put in place by God as far as us having the ability to procreate, to reproduce. So now when we take it in our own hands and we say, okay, well, I'm, well, I'm going to take my liberty of having the choice to have sex, but then I'm also going to take my liberty to go and abort this. Is there a price to pay from God for taking that life that he created, although it could have been conceived in sin? but yet would have been able to be redeemed by the Holy Spirit. So now here we have today men and women defiling the temple of God. The temple of the body and the temple that's the building. Both today are being equally defiled and then being labeled as normal. So we defile the temple of God, which is the gathering place of those in the body. And we defile that and we defile it by turning it into 
a business first. It becomes a business and then it becomes on top of a business, it becomes a place of entertainment. So not a place of consecration, not a place of true worship, not a place of healing and growth and change, but it becomes a place of business. So the church, a lot of people are turning their church into an entertainment hall, an entertainment center. Come in and feel welcomed and be entertained with the theatrics of your mater d. Your master of ceremony will get up here with his effeminate butt and he will entertain you. This is a new version of RuPaul's Drag Hall. Come in here and watch your effeminate descendant of Sodom and Gomorrah get up here and pretend to be a child of the Most High and he is going to entertain you with theatrics. And then you will leave no different than you came in. And after defiling this temple, you will leave out and continue to defile your temple, which the Holy Spirit wants to reside in, but cannot reside in because you leaving and you going to defile your temple. So the Holy Spirit cannot be there because you have not invited the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit is not welcome because while the Holy Spirit is supposed to be residing in your temple, you are inserting yourself into a woman's temple or having a man inserted into your temple and y'all are not married. <laughs> Ooh, so where the Holy Spirit going? The Holy Spirit got to go. Holy Spirit got to go. We'll return when you call with a repentant heart. But the Holy Spirit got to go. Read the Bible. God will tell you. He can't sit around your sin, your willing, indulgent, unrepentant sin. God will have no parts of it. We'll turn his back on you. We'll have no parts of it. Did it to the children of Israel. But now when you are repentant, and you say, Lord, forgive me and give me the strength to do what I need to do. The Holy Spirit, God forgives you and throws your sin into a sea of forgetfulness and remembers it no more. And grace abounds. But see, we are being led to a place of a reprobate mind. And I don't know what it means by definition, only by context clues of the Holy Bible. We've been turned over to a reprobate mind. And with this reprobate mind, men are lost and women are lost. And sin is being normalized. Debauchery is being normalized. Iniquity is being normalized. Filth is being normalized. And we are trying to make God a lie. We trying to make God out to be a lie. But God will not be mocked and God is not a man that he should lie. And this is where the confusion is. So Right now, we, we've seen and, and we've heard and we've said for so long, and I've always seen men as dumb. And the reason why I've always seen men as dumb is because of the stuff we do. The stuff that I did, the stuff my friends did, the stuff that other guys I've seen do, it just had no rhyme or reason. And I did not understand why we was doing what we doing, but I saw women being more rational. And they would not do the things that we did as little boys. They would not do the things that we did as teen boys. They would not do the things we did as young adults. They would not do it. I remember just so much stuff that I did, vandalizing, theft, 
that the women that I knew would never do those things. They didn't partake in those things. I remember when my home girl who was, you know, she, she kind of presented masculine. She was a lesbian and she was the, the masculine of the two. And then she would get, you know, women who were, I get confused or whatever. And she would get them to be with her sexually. And I remember we was about to uh, rob this house one time because this lady had won the lottery. She had hit the lotto of 280,000, if I remember correctly. And she was financially illiterate and she lived in a trailer. And so naturally she didn't want to have all her money in the bank, not trusting the bank, not knowing the bank, never having had to use the bank. So it was said that she had took out a large portion of the cash and kept it in her trailer so she could spend how she wanted to spend. Cause this was back then before like, you know, debit cards and all that was really a thing. Everybody used cash. And so we, we got a bat and the goal was to go to the trailer and just knock the, the trailer door handle off with the bat and then kick the door open and, and rob her at bat point. We didn't have a gun. So we standing at the door and I got the bat and I'm getting ready to swing the bat. I probably was in 10th grade, maybe. Could have been 11th grade. I'm getting ready to swing the bat. And then the next thing you know, the young lady that I'm with, she's like, no, 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 no. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Don't do it. I don't, don't do it. But before we got ready to go, she was so ready. She was such a thug. She was ready to go. She was all right. She, we finna hit this lick. And then, boom. Right there, she changed her mind. That was another example, and just a little, little small example of how the, the rationale of a woman compared to a man. And, and even when you just look at the stuff that men do for fun and for sport. A lot of times women don't get into those things unless they daddy put them into it. Like I think mixed martial arts is one of the dumbest things. I watch it now and I, and I know men who do it, but I'm, I, I have to tell them, I won't say dumb, but I'll say crazy. To me, that's one of the craziest things that you could do as a human being. Like, I don't think we made to get kicked in our ear. And to get elbowed in the eye. I just don't think we made for that. And just to get put on the ground and just get punched in the head over and over. I don't think we made for that. But do we do it? But guess what we done got? Not, guess what we done got? We done got women to do it. So now women becoming, and y'all forgive me to everybody I know who watch this, who do mixed martial arts and, and also boxing. <laughs> I got a lot of clients who box. I played football in college, and honestly, I think football is dumb. I really think it's dumb. And so I'm calling myself dumb, too, because I'm looking for me to look, this, the play in the tackle league, and I might even own me a team. So I know it's dumb, but still willing to do it, and it's willing to watch it. But I want you to think about this. Do you think, from what spirit do you think gladiators were created do you think gladiators were created from the holy spirit from what spirit do you think football and mixed martial arts and boxing was created and when you look at the majority of the people who do it how many of them truly walking with the holy spirit because when you get with the holy spirit you start to look at your body as a temple so see See, when you really with the Holy Spirit, it, it's hard to eat a certain way. When the Holy Spirit is residing in you, you start to become even more food conscious because you're like, this is my temple that the Holy Spirit has to reside in and I need to take care of it. And that's why there was rules for how what you could consume and even what you could wear in the Old Testament. The Old Testament tell you, don't mix wool and linen. You know why? Because wool and linen, the frequencies cancel one another out. But wool, wool-based clothing or linen-based clothing, the frequency is a very high frequency. So it's much better for your health 
than like polyester. And so, but if you mix wool and linen, the frequencies, they nullify one another. And so think about this now. The Bible literally spelled out the linen to put on your body. And it literally spelled out what you could eat and what you could not eat. It, it literally was a blue. It is a blueprint for a holistic, healthy lifestyle. And, and it spells out rules and regulations. It spell out. Do not just and jive. He don't say jive. <laughs> I added that. The Bible in the book of Proverbs, read the book of Proverbs, and you're gonna see that you're gonna find a scripture where it tell you, like, basically what it means, don't play around too much. Don't be joking and playing around too much because it only leads to more sin. <laughs> the good book is serious. The good book is serious. But see, we are being taken so far from the will and the way of God. We've been taken so far from it. We've been led astray. And we've been put in this place of a reprobate mind. We've been put in a reprobate mind to where the ignorant does the ignorance that we indulge in does not seem ignorant. <laughs> the foolishness that we indulge in does not seem foolish. Think about this thing, huh? Really process what you eat. Really think about what you eat. Really think about what you do with your body. Really think about what has been normalized as normal, regular, and healthy. <laughs> this thing crazy. When you really think about it, this thing crazy. It's like, hold on, man. What are we doing? And so now, and the reason why I say I always seen men as dumb is just because literally the stuff we do. And if a man come on here and try to act like the stuff we do as men, unprotected sex with a stripper, unprotected sex with a with a prostitute. That's what it is so many men that done that. Now when you really think about that, how much sense do this make? How much sense do this make? Like when you study the brain and you say you want to live. How much sense do it make to let somebody punch you in your head? How much sense do it make to let a man use his body as a projectile missile and fly and hit you in your temple? I used to, in college have men launch their body with thousands of pounds of force and hit me right here. And then I'm wondering, why I kill somebody. I'm wondering why I'm quick to anger. I'm wondering why I gotta stay so prayed up and so so close to God. Could it be because of the thousand times I was hit right here? Could it be that? Why I work so hard and do so many videos while my brain still functioning normal because I don't know what the future holds for my brain after being hit in the head thousands of times. But think about this. But your son play football. <laughs> Come on now. Come on now. Now, have you studied the brain? Have you studied the brain? But your son play football? Your son play tackle football. But you claim to know about the brain. Have you? So, okay. <laughs> Go talk to a neurosurgeon. I went to talk to a neurosurgeon. I said, listen. I said, how many times is it? How many times can you be hit in the head and it be safe for the brain? The neurosurgeon looked at me. She said, Tony, it's no amount of times it's safe. She said, because just one hit could alter your brain for the rest of your life. 
I said, so what if I had six recorded concussions, but I had a hundred other that I did not report? She did like this. <clears throat> Tony, say that again. I was like, oh, Lord. This woman is a neurosurgeon, huh? She said, Tony, I want to do studies on you. She said, I got my EKG or whatever it is, EEG. She said, we put it on there and we could see the brain activity and what parts of the brain. I never went to do it. And the reason why I ain't went to do it, because I feel like it's so much power in the brain to where when the brain knows something, like me not knowing, it's not hurting me because I ain't thinking about it. I'm able to just live my life. But if I go and some and I get told something, nah, that's a whole nother ball game. Cause it, it ain't a lot that you could do to reverse it. Well, you know what she told me? Cause me and her, we working on an app for people who done had brain trauma. And she said something, cause see, and I didn't even realize this. I thought that an app that show you colors and shapes, and then you gotta remember and punch in what you see. I thought that do something. She said, Tony, it doesn't, if, she said, unless you exercise with it, she said the number one way to regenerate the brain is exercise. She said, now, if you're standing on one leg and you remembering these colors that you just seen, now the brain is being regenerated. This is what a neurosurgeon told me. Don't bring your little science class information in my comments if you're not no neurosurgeon. I talked to a neurosurgeon. I'm not worried about your anatomy class. She said, Tony, if you work, if you doing the, the memory games on the app and you do jumping jacks, you do 25 jumping jacks in between, the exercise is now your brain regenerating. She said, number one thing is, is exercise. Number two thing going to be sleep, getting proper rest. I say, man, I'd be up 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. But I'd probably be up 2, 3 o'clock in the morning because of being hit in the head so much. So listen to me. That's why I tell you. That's why I tell you. And that's why I tell you, every man I meet, listen, don't try me. Don't try me because I don't know what I'm capable of. I might send you to meet the Lord a lot earlier than you want to go. And I'm and I'm not bluffing. I, I ain't bluffing. I ain't, I ain't trying to be no tough guy. None of that. None of that. It's just the way that thing go to working. And that's why I do the work of the Lord. That's why I do what I do on here. That's why I give so much. That's why I serve so much. That's why I do hour-long videos to the 10-minute videos like most other coaches. Most of the other coaches, they doing hour-long videos now to copy me. I already know it because this ain't something that's natural. This ain't something that's easy. This ain't something that you want to do. Do me a favor. Do me a favor. Do me a favor. Do me a favor. Okay. When this video end, if you watch to this point in this video, you different, you special, you hungry. You hungry for life. What's up, son? You hungry for life. You hungry for growth. Now, do me a favor. When you get off this here video, cut your phone on. And shoot your video for an hour. Just talk about whatever it is you want to talk. You, you know your job. You know your job, right? I want you to turn the, your phone camera on. And I want you to teach how to do your job for an hour. I want you to teach how to do your job. And while you teaching how to do your job, I want you to do it without saying, um... Listen to me talking. Do you hear me saying, um? I want you to do it without saying, um. I want you to do it without saying, you know, at, as your period. I want you to do it without saying, right, as your period. I want you to do it without saying, like, as your period. And see how hard that make your brain work. See, this what this what see me doing the work of the Lord. This why I'm doing this. See, a lot of people think, oh, 
He just ain't got nothing else to do. He just shoot an hour long video. No, this right here regenerating my brain. It might not do it to the same extent as doing an incline walk on the treadmill will, but it's exercising my brain and, and being utilized by the Holy Spirit got to be healing. Because you see, you see what Jesus did now. You see what Jesus did with the Holy Spirit. So if the Holy Spirit speaking through me, that got to be healing in itself. <laughs> Come on now. Tell me I'm lying. Come on now. Tell me I'm lying. So think about this. And this is what I want you to work on. My wife just came in the room. I lost my train of thought. Yeah. Y'all know how this child is. I lost my whole train of thought. I was right there. See, we need to work on. <laughs> you said what? You what said I said. That's what you need to work on. That's what I need to work on. That's what you need to work on. You're saying that to the people. Oh, I lost my whole train of thought. It's just this level of beauty coming in the room. Ah. It just, oh my goodness. So listen, now see, one thing that God tells us to do is put our wife first. So that's why when she come in the room, the Holy Spirit say, okay, boo, I know the press, I know the hierarchy. Love your wife as Christ loved the church. So your wife and came in the room, it's time to go on here and shut the video down. But see, I try to get to an hour. I'm at 56 minutes, but it's close enough. So the Lord let me get most of what I need to get done. So, hey, watch this two, three more times. And I really want you to break this down and process this and put this in your spirit. My wife back there getting the video of my outfit and how I'm sitting in her bed. So God bless you. Get this in there. And I want you to take this and create your own theories and create your own hypothesis. And I want you to write this stuff down and I want you to start paying attention to society around you. Pay attention to yourself and your choices. Pay attention to your children. And watch what I tell you. And, and now you're going to see the moving of the adversary and what's being done out here. Hey, this is Tony Gaston here. God bless you. We'll talk soon. Make sure you get over to TonyGastonAcademy.com. We got the $19.70 courses over there for you. Uh, the business courses put over there. God bless you. And my birthday is March 8th, so I'm going to take my coaching back down to the discounted prices. So stay tuned. You probably need to be either subscribed or have taken a course on TonyGastonAcademy.com so you'll be notified for the one-on-one one -on -one sessions. God bless you. We'll talk soon. Hmm, let me see. Let me hit this here. 58. Right, eight seconds here. Get that old good 58. Have a round number. Even.